Okay. So moving on to our next subtopic, large permanent vacuole and tonoblast. Again, when we were talking about animal versus plant cell, we said that um, in animal cells, temporary small vacuoles are present and they do not have a greater purpose in animal cells. However, in plant cell, the vacuole plays a very important part. It is a large and a permanent vacuole. It's always present in a plant cell. We'll just in a minute understand why it is always present in a plant cell. However, um, obviously, vacuole hamare paas, um, ek vesicle ki tarah hota, but it is larger in size. So obviously, it is surrounded by a membrane. It is surrounded by a um, layer. It is enclosed in a membrane. And why so? Because vacuole has certain contents. It has your nutrients and it has your metabolic waste. So all the glucose, all the amino acids, all the protein, all the necessary nutrient content of a plant cell that is present inside the vacuum. It's not present in the, what do you say? It is not present in the cytoplasm freely. It is not present in any organelle. Majority nutrients, majority uh, waste material, majority processes are taking place inside the vacuum. So the nourishment plant cell apni derive kar out hai. it is deriving that nourishment and its metabolic activities in the vacuum. So basically, obviously now the vacuum, because it consists of glucose, sucrose, amino acids, uh, peptides and all of that, it is obviously a fluid-like region and the contents of the vacuum are therefore termed as a cell stack. Okay. So basically, cell sap is enclosed. Now all these contents, the waste material and the nutrients, after glucose, amino acids, water, and even the metabolic waste products, whatever processes are taking place inside the vacuum, um, there are reactants for those processes and then there are the products of those processes. So all of these are present inside the cell sap. Obviously, this content needs to be enclosed. It cannot be freely present inside the cytoplasm because obviously, her teeth take up the environment with that. If the meta metabolic waste uh, is uh, randomly floating in the cell, it can disrupt the enzymatic uh, activities. Um, it can hinder other processes as well. So the uh, content of the vacuum, the sap, is enclosed in a tonoplast so that it doesn't freely leak out. Properly vesicles get through or proper membrane get through whenever the uh, transport of substances is required out of the vacuum, out of the tonoplast. So if the uh, uh, movement ho, otherwise, whatever content is present inside the vacuum should stay inside the vacuum unless it has to be transported. So that membrane of the vacuum is known as the tonoplast. So let me draw this and this is your tonoplast which is the membrane of vacuole. Okay, Jane. Now, tonoplast is selectively permeable, which regulates the entry and exit of substances into and out of the cell sap. As I mentioned, that it is very important that the cell sap, the content of cell sap stays within the cell sap and is only transported, is only moved out of the cell sap whenever necessary or required. So it has to be selectively permeable. It cannot allow everything to enter into the cell sap. Only the things which are specific to the cell sap have to be in the cell sap. Otherwise, it would not allow the rest of the things to enter into the vacuum. And subsequently, it cannot allow all the contents of the cell sap to leak out of the cell sap or to leak out of the vacuum so tonoplast is selectively permeable and oh yeah, that's all about tonoplast. So now what is the function of a large permanent vacuole? Why do we require a large permanent vacuole inside a plant cell? One uh, reason is very evident as we discussed that cell sap is basically consisting of all the useful substances, of all the nutritional substances of the plant cell. So it is a storage site. It is where all the nutrients are stored of a plant cell. So our large permanent vacuole serves as a storage site for useful substances. And I have listed the useful substances for you guys. It can be glucose, amino acids, water, etc. And waste substances are also enclosed within the permanent vacuole, which are your metabolic waste products. Then a very important role, a very salient, a very vital role of vacuole is the vacuolar turgidity. Now, what do I mean by vacuolar turgidity? 
Okay. So basically what happens is that, um, obviously water and other solutes are present inside it. So I can say, if I draw a vacuum, this is, for example, my vacuum. Okay. And this is its tonoplast. Now there is basically our cell sap inside this. This is my cell sap. Now what happens is that, for example, a lot of uh, this cell sap is basically pushing against the tonoplast. It's exerting a hydrostatic force, right? Due to which the vacuole is it a swelled species, it's a swelled organelle. And because, and for example, if the cytoplasm, the cytoplasmic content, because it's outside environment of a vacuole is basically your cytoplasm. So for example, if there is more water coming inside the cell, inside the cell cytoplasm, there is more water entering inside the vacuole, inside the, in, inside the cell sap. So what happens is that this uh, vacuole would increase in size. Why? Because the water content, the solution of the cell sap is increasing. And even for instance, if there is more amino acids, if there are more um, glucose or if there are more nutrients coming inside the cell sap, so our solute concentration is increasing. So then again, our vacuole is increasing in size. The volume of the cell sap is increasing and it is pushing against the vacuole. So our vacuole thoda bahut expand karega. there would be an increase and that's exactly what turgidity is that the pressure of water or the hydrostatic pressure of a fluid pushing against a membrane causing it to swell causing it to increase in the, in the size so what happens is for example mera vacuole itna tha ab ye swell ho kar, itna ho gaya. it's becoming turgid why because it has increased or it has swelled in size so what happens is that when it is increasing in size, it is expanding in size, it is pushing these chloroplasts to the boundary of the cell. So if you could even see, not just the fact that the vacuum would become more turgid, it would expand in size, that though is obviously pushing this chloroplast more. But even if we ignore that the uh, vacuum has become more turgid, the vacuum is large. Now what is it serving? What's the purpose it, is it serving? So because it is occupying most of the space in the plant cell, it is occupying most of the region of the plant cell, it is pushing the rest of the organelles to the boundary. It's pushing the organelles because it itself is too large. And in addition to that, if it becomes more turgid, if it expands in size because of more content incoming in the cell sap, what happens is that these chloroplasts are pushed more to the end of the cell. And because the chloroplasts are pushed more to the ends of the cell, they are more closer to the light because if the light is coming from this way and my chloroplast is here, so my chloroplast would have to, um, would, ha would have more distance for the light to travel and be absorbed by this chloroplast. On the contrary, if this chloroplast is pushed to the end or to the edge or to the periphery of the cell, the light has to cover less distance to be absorbed by the chloroplast. So what happens is that this vacuolar turgidity, this vacuole increasing in size, expanding in size is resulting into a positive change, which is that it pushes the chloroplast to the edge of the cell, in turn maximizing light absorption Therefore, increasing the efficiency of photosynthesis. So what is the purpose of the chloroplast? What is the purpose of the vacuole to be large in size and then to be turgid? It is that it is pushing the chloroplast to the edges, to the boundary of the cell, which in turn is resulting in a more efficient photosynthesis. Why? Because light would be quickly absorbed. And once the light is absorbed, the process of photosynthesis would occur more efficiently and more fast. Okay, vascular turgidity provides support to the plant cell and maintains its shape. So again, turgidity, be it of the cell wall or be it of the vacuole, is one of the main reasons why plant cell have a definite, have a proper structure and shape. Okay. Um, is that clear about large permanent vacuole? Any questions about it? Okay. Moving to plasmodesmata. So up until now, what we have studied is 
that plant cell has two boundaries. And what are those boundaries? Cell wall and cell membrane. So if anything has to enter into a plant cell, it has to first cross the cell wall, right? And then it has to cross the cell membrane, right? So basically for anything to enter into a plant cell, it has to cover or it has to, um, you know, cross two boundaries. And both these boundaries should allow the substance to enter into the plant cell. Either the substance has to be in, um, either the substance should be small enough to pass through the pores of the cell wall. And if it has passed through the, so, through the pores of the cell wall, it should be allowed by the cell membrane as well. Because cell membrane does not allow the entry of everything. Cell wall would not filter anything. It would not see that it is toxic, it is required, it is necessary. As long as it is small enough to pass through its pores, it would allow it. If it is not small enough to pass through its pores, it would not allow it. So only the size of that um, substance would, is the determining factor for it to pass through the boundary of cell wall. However, cell membrane is very intelligent, not like intelligent literally, but in comparison to cell wall, we can say that cell membrane has an idea what it has to allow and what it does not have to allow. So if the cell membrane allows that substance to pass through it, only then would that substance be able to enter into a plant cell. However, if there is something urgent, if one plant cell has to send something, uh, a, for example, a cytoplasmic signal, or it has to send a hormone to another plant, a plant cell, it has to uh, move through these two boundaries. Now it is relatively time consuming. So a plant cells are like, okay, our content our own personal content that is not harmful and we are transferring our contents from one to another for example your siblings you're living in the same house so you can easily share your things right for example you're asking some other person to deliver something to your place a delivery boy would come there would be a mediator that he would come to your doorstep and he would then ask you are you this person he'll confirm your details and then he'll give you what you require on the contrary, if you have to borrow something from your uh, brother or from your sister, you would easily go and ask them and get it from them. So plant cells are like, okay, we are together in together. So let's do one thing that instead we, you know, I leave my own house. I pass from my gate. I come to you. I stand on your gate. I ring the doorbell. And then you open the gate and then I enter. That's a very time-consuming process. I open my gate from the outside. Then I get into your gate and it's a time-consuming process. Let's do one thing. We are neighbors. Let's make an internal way in our house. So instead, you leave your gate, then go to your neighbor's place, then enter into your neighbor's house um, by ringing the doorbell and everything. You make an internal pathway between the houses, um, connecting each other, and you do not have to go through that entire formality and the security process. And that's feasible, that's saving you time. So that's exactly what plasma desmata is. So plasma desmata, if you could see, this is plant cell number one, this is plant cell one, this is plant cell two. And what is happening is that if you could see, this is the cell wall. This is the cell wall of this plant cell. And then this is cell membrane of this plant cell. And this is cell membrane of this plant cell. Now, if you could notice, achha, cell wall or cell membrane ko collectively we call cell boundary. These two collectively are making the boundary of the cell. So there is this point, there is this region where this boundary is absent between two adjacent plant cells. Aram say the cytoplasm of this cell can enter into this cell and the cytoplasm of this cell can enter into this cell. So this region where the cell boundary, where the cell wall, the cell membrane are absent between two adjacent plant cells, that region is known as what? That region is known as plasmodesmata. The singular is plasmodesma and the plural is plasmodesmata. Okay. Now, the functions of plasma does matter. Why do we need this gap or why do we need this internal pathway or this internal connection between two plants? Plants. As I mentioned, up of the neighbor gave her 
अपने अपने घर में आ रहे हो यू पार्क पास दैट नेबर्स हाउस देयर न्यू नेब देयर गेट देन यू कम एट योर गेट यू रिंग द डोर बेल एंड देन यू कम इन साइड द हाउस इट्स जस्ट इजियर इट्स जस्ट क्विकर कम्युनिकेशन मूवमेंट for you to go from your house to an internal path when enter into your uh, neighbor's house directly so that's exactly the function of plasma does matter plasma does matter transports water sugars amino acids proteins hormones between adjacent cells all these substances which are present in one cell they can quickly move can be quickly transported from one cell to the neighboring cell through this direct cytoplasmic region Because what is plasma? Does matter. It is made up of cytoplasmic strands which run transversely across the walls of a plant cell. So, ये भी यहाँ पे भी cytoplasm है, यहाँ पे भी cytoplasm है, यहाँ पे भी cytoplasm है. And Huda, you asked me that what exactly is cytoplasm? So you can consider cytoplasm as a gel-like fluid. That's like what's the answer? That basically you've not studied this um topic in A levels. आप लोग colloids या sol gel नहीं पढ़ते. but basically something which can act as both a solution and a gel that is your sol gel or colloid so it's a semi fluid it is not exactly fluid in nature but it is not exactly solid in nature so this uh, cytoplasm is basically a semi fluid theek hai ji this is a semi fluid um thing theek hai does that answer your query huda the other day you were asking me about cytoplasm okay then again as i said that plasma does matter is just a relatively quicker method of communication of transport so over here it says that it's rapid communication between adjacent cells because substances do not have to pass the cell boundary okay so that's about it for today um any questions so far plasma does matter um large permanent vacuole cell wall chloroplast today we just focused on basically the things that are present in plant cells so ye charo cheeze jo hain they are um specifically subjective to plants and so that's about it um great so i'll be uploading today's learning assignment and you can go and refer to yesterday's recording to catch up on what you missed in yesterday's class um so that's about it um see you tomorrow inshallah